The name Yuji Naka may be one that's familiar to you if you're a video game enthusiast, as he is the co-creator of Sonic the Hedgehog. He was the programmer for the original game, and without him, Sonic just wouldn't be what it is today. He is a rather key figure in gaming history with how iconic Sonic is as a character. On the other hand, Yuji Naka will also be familiar because it is tied to a flop of a video game that you may know as Balan Wonderworld. So here's the trailer for those who don't know what it is. It's this colorful action-adventure platformer. And, you know, when the trailer first came out, a lot of people felt like it had a lot of potential. It seemed really creative in what it was attempting to do. And it was from Yuji Naka. So a lot of people were excited to see what the Sonic creator had in store with a fresh new IP. But then the game launched back in March of 2021 and the critical reception was anything but encouraging. If you look at the PlayStation 5 Metascore, which has the most number of critic reviews, it's currently sitting at a 51% from 29 critic reviews and user scores are right there in line with that score at a 5.3 out of 10. And then if you look at the meta score for other platforms, that score just gets worse and worse. For Xbox Series X, the meta score is sitting at a 47 out of 100 from 11 critic reviews. The PlayStation 4 version sitting at a 44. The PC version, 38. The Switch version, a 36. And the user scores themselves are not particularly encouraging either. They overall seem to agree with what critics are saying. Balan Wonderworld had seemingly flopped so badly that Yuji Naka parted ways with Square Enix shortly following Balan Wonderworld's release. It was later clarified by Yuji Naka in a tweet that he resigned from Square Enix. He said, I resigned from Square Enix at the end of April. While I cannot share the reason right now, I hope to be able to discuss it when the time comes. As for what I'll do in the future, I'm already 55 years old, so I may as well retire. So the way the scenario was perceived was that Yuji Naka tried to kind of branch out with this new IP. It flopped very very hard. He took it really hard. And with how much the negative critical reception and the negative audience reception weighed on him, he decided to call it quits, retire, and just take a break from this industry that has exhausted him. And I'm sure there are also people speculating that he didn't actually retire, that Square Enix forced him to leave because of how poorly his game performed and whatnot. But fast forward to one year later, fast forward to today, April 28th, 2022, and we now have some more context as to what may have happened behind the scenes that led to all of this with Yuji Naka's bombshell of a Twitter thread that claims that Square Enix is in large at fault here, that the publisher kicked him out of the project six months before its release, and they didn't really let him ship the game in the best state possible, is what he claims. So I'd like to go ahead and read this Twitter thread, see what he has to say, and then comment along the way. Now, there's this other Twitter user going by the name Cheesemeister, who provided a more accurate translation, so that's what I'll be reading for you guys. So here's how Yuji Naka kickstarted this thread. I was removed as the director of Balin Wonderworld about half a year before release, so I filed a lawsuit against Square Enix. Now that the proceedings are over and I'm no longer bound by company rules, I'd like to speak out. Now when he says the proceedings are over, does he mean that the initial stages of this legal battle have concluded, thereby allowing him to kind of speak out a little bit about it, or has the legal battle come to its conclusion and some kind of settlement has been reached. I'm not entirely sure on that yet, but he continues. I think it's wrong of Square Enix to not value games and game fans. According to court documents, I was removed as a director of Balin Wonderworld for two reasons. It was done by the producer, head of marketing, head of sound, managing director, and HR. First, when a YouTuber's arranged piano performance of the game music was released in a promotion instead of the original game track, turning the composer into a ghostwriter, I insisted that the original track be released, and this caused trouble. Seems like a reasonable request to ask that a YouTuber's cover of the official track be released alongside the actual original official track. That way, the original creator of the work, the original composer, can be properly credited. But apparently that caused some kind of issues behind the scenes. And then second, according to court documents, Naoto Oshima told producer Noriyoshi Fujimoto that the relationship with 
Arzest, the development studio behind uh, Balin Underworld, was ruined due to comments I made wanting to improve the game in the face of Arzest submitting the game without fixing bugs. Now, this is an interesting situation because now Toshima is the other side to the Sonic the Hedgehog coin. Yuji Naka and now Toshima are often credited to be the co-creators of Sonic, with Yuji Naka being the programmer and Naoto Oshima being the character designer who designed Sonic the Hedgehog and Dr. Eggman. So apparently he told producer Noriyoshi Fujimoto, who is a producer on franchises like Dragon Quest and was a producer on Balan Underworld, that the relationship with Arzus was ruined because Yuji Naka wanted to make improvements to the game. Let's keep reading through this. Yuji Naka continued with, also in an email from Oshima to Fujimoto, he wrote, I just told the staff about the demo delay when I told them this was producer Fujimoto's decision. Let's do our best for him. The staff applauded and cheered. This was unexpected and I was moved. The staff's been down lately, but their spirits have been revived. Thank you very much. All of us on the staff will work hard. So the schedule wasn't up to me, but the producer, yet the schedule being tight was the producer's doing. Something was off. I'm also going to read Yuji Naka's version to see if we can get more clarity. Second, according to the court documents, what I said in response to RZ's submission of the game without fixing it, without fixing the bugs, despite the fact that there were glitches in the development process, that my comments to make the game better are disrupting my relationship with Arzest. Another point is that Oshima wrote in an email to Fujimoto, I just gathered the staff together and informed them about the matter of shifting the trial version. This decision was made by producer Fujimoto. We will do our best for Mr. Fujimoto. The staff applauded and cheered. The next part of that email apparently read, The staff who tended to be down lately has been revitalized. Thank you very much. The entire staff will do our best. And then Yuji Naka adds, But it doesn't matter because the schedule is decided by the producer, not me. And the producer decided that the schedule is tight something is not right. So it does seem like what Yuji Naka is implying is that Fujimoto took the credit for solving the problem that he himself caused, the tight schedule. I guess something along the lines is what Yuji Naka is trying to convey, and then he continues with, we were releasing an original game, but only putting out an arranged track was definitely wrong. I believe that the game music that everyone can hum out are the original tracks. I believe that every effort must be put into make games the best they can be until the very end so that game fans will enjoy what they buy. It wasn't right to, without discussion, remove and completely disassociate from the project a director saying so. Here's Yuji Naka's version of that tweet. I believe that a game should be made with the intention of making it a good game until the very end so that game fans can enjoy it when they buy it. I think it is strange to remove a director who comments on a game without consulting him because there is not enough time to do so. So it seems as though what Yuji Naka suggesting is that a big part of why he was removed from the role of director was because of his dissent against the tight schedule of this game and the fact that in the state that it was when they were submitting the game, it just wasn't in a good enough state and he wanted to make sure that this game launched in a polished state and was kind of seeking for that to be the priority and apparently got clap back for it. And then his tweet mentions communication restrictions, stating retweeting, liking, etc. on SNS and such was banned, so I don't think Square Enix valued game fans. SNS, I believe, refers to social networking sites. There were many comments and wonderful illustrations about Balin Wonderworld, and I'm really sorry that I couldn't react to them. Here's Yuji Naka's translation of that tweet. Retweets, likes, etc. on social networking sites were also banned, so I think Square Enix is not taking good care of their game fans. There were a lot of various comments and very nice illustrations of Balin Wonderworld, and I'm really sorry that I couldn't do anything about it. I mean, this is kind of starting to remind me of the whole Konami-Kojima situation where after that feud began, Konami greatly restricted Kojima's ability to communicate. Hell, they restricted his ability to accept a trophy for Metal Gear Solid 5's Game Awards award. The fact that the game director wasn't allowed to engage with the community and the fan base that they're trying to build up I mean, not only is it kind of messed up, but it's counterintuitive to trying to sell copies of this game. Community interaction can garner loyalty and can help spread the word, and they crippled Yuji Naka's ability to engage with the community to build that loyalty and to kind of express his gratitude and just create a wholesome community. Yuji Naka proceeds to apologize for the state of Balin Wonderworld, saying myself, I'm truly sorry to the customers who bought Balin Wonderworld in an unfinished state. From this point onward, I will be able to react to posts tagging me or directed only toward me on social networking sites and such. Assuming that everything he's claiming in this Twitter thread is true, 
It would seem as though he has no reason to apologize as he was screwed over by the publisher. It would seem as though Yuji Naka was the one who was pushing for this game to be delayed or to just be given more time and more polish, but apparently management didn't deem that a worthwhile endeavor, and if that's the case indeed, it doesn't seem like they really care about the games that they put out there and the fans and the community surrounding them. And it wasn't just that Yuji Naka's feedback went ignored, there seems to have been retaliation for suggesting that this game just wasn't in a good enough state to launch. What good management should do to assess the situation and go, maybe we should delay this game because we are selling this product to paying customers who want the game to be good the day that it launches and not after. And it would seem as though this retaliation eventually led to Yuji Naka being removed from his position as director of Balin Wonderworld. Yuji Naka then says that I believe that when making games, asking for fixes in order to make something good should be a given. And if that's not possible, it should be talked over, but it looks like they can't. I don't think they value games. Yeah, I mean, if this is actually how things played out behind the scenes, what the hell, Square Enix and producers of Balin Underworld and management? Why shoot yourself in the foot by releasing a substandard product instead of really kind of going all in and aiming for the highest review scores possible so that it'll attract attention, word of mouth will spread, and your game will have a higher potential of selling. It's just such a classic publisher mentality of just get it out there for, you know, short-term goals. Yuji Naka then reminisced on the development of Sonic the Hedgehog and how last-minute improvements went a long way to improve the overall design of the game. For Sonic the Hedgehog, two weeks before finalizing, the spec was changed so that if you have even one ring, you won't die. This now well-known rule was a result of improving the game until the very end, and people world over have enjoyed it as a result. Improving a game until the very end is what being a game creator is all about, and if that's not possible, something's wrong. I asked my lawyer to negotiate my just being able to comment until the end of production, but their refusal led me to file suit. They just shut him out completely, and Yuji Naka decided to take legal action against what he felt were very unjust retaliations for him just simply saying, hey, shouldn't we ship the best game possible? Shouldn't we, you know, fix the bugs and, you know, respect the fact that people are buying this game and are expecting a great product, are expecting a polished product, a product that works and is something that they'll deem worthy of its price tag. Yuji Naka concludes with, I think that the resulting Balin Wonderworld and the critical reception it received have a lot to do with what happened. I'm really disappointed that a product I worked on from the start turned out this way. I personally regret that Balin Wonderworld was released to the world in an unfinished state. I wanted to consider all kinds of things and release it as a proper action game. I don't think that Square Enix and RZS value games and their fans. Damn. But again, if these allegations are true, then, yeah, Yuji Naka has plenty of great points to make here. Assuming these allegations are true, the worst part would be that Square Enix let Yuji Naka take the fault. They allowed people to think and the narrative to spread that Yuji Naka was an incompetent director, that he steered this ship into the iceberg and that this was all ultimately his doing. They allowed his name to be dragged through the mud. They didn't allow him to communicate or to express anything to people. And he had to like hold all this in until he decided to take legal action and eventually get to this point where he's finally able to tell people from his perspective what happened, why this project failed. And again, assuming what he's saying is true, assuming these allegations are true, it would seem as though the blame does not lie with Yuji Naka. He was just screwed over by... I guess, corporate and business interests. Now, with all that said, I keep saying assuming this is all true because this is all ultimately hearsay for now. I guess we'll have to wait and see how Square Enix responds to all of this. And over time, as more information comes out, hopefully we'll get a better picture. From an objective standpoint, I cannot tell you definitively that Yuji Naka, everything he said here is the absolute truth. But what I will say is that there is an extensive history of game publishers screwing over developers and so it would not surprise me one bit if it did turn out that everything Yuji Naka has conveyed here is the truth. But before I can make any kind of determination, I do want to wait and hear from the other side of things to see if we can find the truth somewhere in the middle. Like, who knows? Some might argue that this may be Yuji Naka trying to save face by blaming the company or something like that. But I'll be honest with you, I don't get that vibe from this guy. 
This is just speaking from a subjective standpoint. I don't know why he'd risk putting himself out there like this unless he really felt like he was screwed over. He felt like he was wronged. The only reason for someone to put themselves through so much trouble is because they genuinely felt like they were slighted. They felt like an injustice happened and they want to right that wrong and uh, find proper justice. In terms of what my gut is telling me, this scenario that Yuji Naka is presenting, I don't find it to be unbelievable whatsoever because publishers have such a long track record of engaging in scummy ways, both against customers and also against developers. So we'll see how this all plays out. But assuming Yuji Naka is being honest here, I hope that him finally being able to get this off his chest will allow him to find some kind of resolution to this unfortunate situation. The hope is that with all the support that he's seeing that he will, you know, get inspired and hopefully find better partners for whatever future endeavors may be in store for him. But until we learn more information, this is one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Yuji Naka's Twitter thread and how this has affected your perspective on the whole Balin Wonderworld situation. Share your thoughts in the comments below. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.